So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and if you guys caught my last Microsoft beta review on iPadOS 15 then you notice that I left out one application that was part of that beta developer program which is Microsoft OneNote. So Microsoft OneNote was revitalized, they added all those new Windows 11 icons and things like that and they brought it over to the iPad Pro or to any iPad for that matter. So what I want to do today is kind of spend this video talking about Microsoft OneNote, how well it works, what some of the cool features are, what makes it better than things like Apple Notes or Notability and things like that. So today's gonna to be kind of a full walkthrough of at least all the basic tasks with Microsoft OneNote and to let you guys know how it runs on iPadOS 15 as well because we are running iPadOS 15 beta 2 right now. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So we're gonna jump right into this video and here we have the iPad Pro. Again, I'm rocking the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, the M1 version on iPad OS 15 beta two right now. Beta three should be coming out, I think today at some point. So be on the lookout for a video on iPad OS beta three. Because again, Microsoft OneNote is a note-taking application. So I wanna be able to use the note-taking application with my Apple Pencil as if you know I'm a student in a lecture, as if I'm a professional in a big meeting you know, on a Monday morning, trying to figure out what the pipeline is looking like for this week and things like that. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have to, first off, see if it's in here. It is not. So we're not in the actual multitasking. So we're gonna open it, see how quickly it opens. So instant open with that M1, it's freaking amazing. And you can see it's a little bit different. It's following that same design language as all the other Microsoft products that I showed off in a video earlier this week. And then another thing that I wanna test out here in the beginning, because again, this is gonna be a full walkthrough of A, the capabilities of OneNote, and then B, just how to get the basics done, like how to use your Apple Pencil, how to type on it, how to use the lasso, you know, how to go ink to shape and things like that. So what I'm gonna do now is actually, we're gonna move this out of the way. We're gonna go into multitasking. We're gonna try to open up another OneNote. And you can see that multiple instances of the same OneNote application is not possible. So you cannot multitask and manipulate data that's on one OneNote sheet and move it over to another one. One thing that I will test out is in Microsoft Office, this is a, the hub application. So we'll press next because we're still under test flight and things like that. But if you guys look in here, unfortunately you can't open OneNote files from here. So trying to bypass it by using this as a one version of OneNote and then using the actual OneNote, it won't work. So again, let's try it out. Let's open up OneNote, go into multitasking, try to open up another one, no dice. But if I do wanna open up a OneNote, multitask with let's say something like Microsoft Word, then it does work. So at that point, yes, you can manipulate things. So double tap, we'll, we'll copy this over here, move it to this guy and then tap here to paste. And you can see that all that does move over. So if you're working off a of Microsoft Word and a Microsoft OneNote, or basically a Microsoft OneNote and any other Microsoft application, then 100% you can multitask and you're good to go. But now let's focus on the OneNote application itself. So here you can see how it's all broken down. You have your top row columns up here with the home insert draw, and then you have the sub headings under that or the sub options and menus. And then on the left-hand side, you have basically sections that you can kind of break up and then pages. So for instance, if I wanna create, let's say a section for my bio class, right? And then press done. If I wanna create a section for calculus, right? Ooh, if I can even spell. It's also a little bit harder to type without the actual keyboard. So calculus, boom. You can see that those are all basically textbooks or notepads that I created within it. So no longer are we in a world where I gotta carry five different spiral notebooks with 100 pages each for every single subject. So here we are. And then, so let's go into the bio one. Let's rename this one right here. So here you can just do, let's say test. And you can see that it automatically names that sheet inside of that notebook test. So if we stay inside of this notebook and stay inside the text editor, if we go to the home section, first off, you can see that the UI is a little bit different. It's more bubbly, it's more circular. It's a little bit more pleasant to look at because they're taking that design language that basically Windows took with Windows 11, which is center everything to the middle and make that your life essentially. So that's why they moved the entire toolbar and made it as minimal as possible, made it in the center as possible. Right? So you have your home, your insert, your draw, and your view all in the middle. So you have quick access to it. So if you lower this out, and now you can see that you have all your regular text editor stuff, right? So here we can type out whatever we want, you know, make it bold, italic, underline it and say, hey, what's up? Right, so that works as a text editor. You also have the ability to highlight. So if I wanna highlight this, you know, let's say you wanna highlight it in red, you can highlight that as well. So again, this part of the note-taking capability is probably a little bit better with the magic keyboard, you know, a typing accessory, something like that. But we're gonna get into the drawing functionality in a little bit. But you can see that all the different options variables, pretty much anything that you need is available from a text editor standpoint. You know, you can strike things through. So if I wanna, again, double tap this, 
select all, strike that through. Boom, you can do that as well. Highlighting, you could add bullets also if you want to. So I can bullet it, you can number it. You can move it to the left, to the right. Again, here's all your alignment stuff. You can change your styles up, so make it like a heading one. And then you can add checklist, add star checklist, add questions if you want, create different tags in terms of what's important, what's not. Because again, Microsoft OneNote is also a collaboration tool. So if you wanna share notes with somebody else, all you have to do is send them their email and I'll show you guys how to share that. But then again, whenever somebody's doing something on Microsoft OneNote on a shared sheet, you'll be notified and then you can also see like, hey, it's a question, remember for later, don't forget to highlight that, add a phone number if you want, things like that. So there's a lot of different options and functionality with Microsoft OneNote that are pretty hidden and not a lot of people know about. And if we click on this little note guy here, these are side stickies. So if you guys are part of the Microsoft world, if you're on Windows, you know that sticky notes is part of that. So you can basically just add little sticky notes, say, don't forget X, Y, and Z. Oh, look at that. Don't forget. We'll move that down, press done. And you can see that that little sticky note is there. So whenever you need it, you're good to go. We'll X out of there. So that is kind of the home section. But now let's go into insert. Let's see what kind of functionality and capabilities we have, we have here. So obviously you have the ability to add tables. So if I wanna add a table, you can do whatever you want with it. So there you are. So table one, and then the two. So adding tables and functionality like that is pretty easy. And then you can even add, kind of, you can add like tables within tables. So you can see that everything kind of just stays right there, which is nice. And then if we get out of there, we, let's continue on with all the different insert options. So you can insert pictures. So allow access to all photos and you can see, you know, this is my new wallpaper that I've been working on, which is nice to have. So you can do whatever you want with it. You can crop it, move it around if you want. You can edit it within here. So we'll press done and you can see that it was added in there. Can you resize it and stuff? You cannot resize the actual image or yes, you can. So look at that. You can resize it and it moves with all the other text that you've already put on there. Also, you're able to add things directly from your camera. So if I want to give it access to the camera, I can do that. You can pick it up, you know, say cheese. Press done, we can use that in there. Again, resize it when needed, so all good to go. Uh, you can bring pictures in from online if you want, which I'm not gonna do. You can even audio record and put an audio recording in there. You can add files. You can even add PDFs from here. You can add different links, add equations if you want to, dates, meeting details, and even stickers. So if you wanna add in you know, something crazy, like one of these, boom, you got a little sticker in there to show off, show off with whoever you're collaborating with. But now let's go into the draw section because this is where things get really, really nice, really. So now let's get into the actual drawing section. So to draw, all you really have to do is grab your Apple Pencil and tap on the screen. And you can see that once I tapped on the screen, automatically the top row, the top toolbar went into draw mode. So one thing that I love and absolutely love about Microsoft OneNote, and I don't know if Notability has this, but I know for a fact that Apple Notes does not have this, is this idea of an infinite canvas, right? So let's open up a brand new page here. We'll call this test two and let's go back to draw. The first thing that I like to see is the fact that yes, all I did was tap on the actual screen and all of a sudden I'm drawing. And the same functions that you have with Apple Notes or with your Apple Pencil, you're gonna have it here. So double tap to go to eraser and I can just erase. That's all good to go. And then again, the main thing that I love about this is this thing called the infinite canvas. So for instance, if I draw you know, a circle, let's say right here, if I just pull up the actual marker, let's draw a circle. And then I wanna open it up, draw another circle and another circle. All of a sudden I'm out of room, right? I'm out of room on my page. Ah, I should have made these circles smaller. I should have made the line smaller, but oh wait, with Microsoft OneNote, grab my fingers, pinch in, and all of a sudden look how big my canvas got, right? That's the idea of the infinite canvas. I can zoom in. So if I wanna make like another, you know, other branches of this one, I can do that. You know, keep zooming out, maybe move this one over here, right? So it's this idea that I can continuously zoom out and I guess technically it's not infinite because there is like that is the minimum that I can go. But guys, it's big. Like you can get in here and really, really hone in if you want, right? Maybe even draw little circles inside of here, you know, or triangles or sub to the channel. So there's a lot of possibilities with this infinite canvas, which is something that I really, really like with Microsoft OneNote. Some other things that I do want to show you inside of the actual drawing section is that you can easily go into text mode just by pressing onto text mode. So I tap on here and all of a sudden you know, I'm typing out words and things like that. But again, we're super zoomed out. So we have to zoom in and make sure we can actually see what we're typing, right? So we'll delete that, no big deal. Let's get out of that mode. So now let's draw, let's say a triangle, right? And if I wanna move that triangle, I can do a lasso select. So go here, circle it up. And now I can even resize it. I can move it around. So I'll grab here, I can move it to over here. You know, I can do whatever I want and manipulate this triangle however I see fit just by doing the lasso select. Other options on here, you know, you have your classic highlighter. So if I go into here, you can highlight, you have a red marker, which you can do whatever you want with. 
and there's even added bonuses so you can add as many pens and highlighters and different colors and iterations of it up on your top toolbar if that's what you want. And then you also have the ability to add different shapes. So if you want to draw a perfect square, you can do that. If you want to change the color of it, so let's add a rectangle over here, you can do that as well. And then another nice addition that Microsoft OneNote did add, I guess they saw Apple did this, so they had to kind of do their own version. So right now, if I draw a circle, you can see that it's in my handwriting, it's really ugly, it's not a perfect circle. But if I type or touch on the ink to shape button, and I draw that same circle and hold it down, you can see, boom, perfect circle. And if I turn that off again, draw a circle, doesn't work, ink to shape of a draw a triangle, perfect triangle. And then lastly, we have the draw mode over here, which allows you to draw with touch. So if you don't have your Apple Pencil, you haven't spent $130 on an Apple Pencil, but you still have to do some diagramming and, and note taking with your finger, I guess, you just tap on here with draw with touch, and then all the other functionality that you were getting, like the ink to shape, all those other things, it'll work with your fingers. So boom, circle, right? Triangle, perfect triangle, square, perfect rectangle, and that was all my finger. And if I go back here, let's turn that off and we're good to go. And then the last section we're gonna to touch on is this view section. So I'm gonna add another page. So we're gonna go test three over here, press down. Here's where you get to kind of customize exactly how you're gonna view your note taking and how you're actually going to interact with it. So here you can easily just switch the background. So if you're in dark mode and you wanna to go to light mode, you can do that pretty easily. Immersive Reader basically takes any text that you have. So let's say we go here. I mean, there isn't much text or anywhere really, really, but if you press Immersive Reader, it's basically an add-in to Microsoft OneNote that lets you kind of immerse yourself in the actual test, right? It's Sasquatch, I didn't type that out, so it's kind of trying to figure out what to do. And then also it'll read it out loud to you if you want, right? So if you do have a lot of notes and you're more of an auditory kind of learner, so you took a bunch of notes during class and you want it read back to you, then you can do that and it works pretty well. Another thing you can do is change the actual, you know, how much you're zoomed in, the page width, paper color. So if you do want to change up the paper color, you can do that, so no color and then paper style. So this is where I always go to before I actually start a note. So I go into paper style and I really like grid lines. I'm so used to using grid line notebooks back in high school and college because I was big into math and things like that. And this just kind of kept me organized. So in paper style, you can do college ruled, you can do like super wide ruled, you can do big squares, you can do tiny grid lines. So, and again, if you zoom out, they're even tinier. If you zoom in, they're bigger. So again, that's just how you view and how you interact and basically what you want your sheet of paper to look like. And then lastly, you have the ability to password protect each individual note, each individual note taking file. So if that's something that you wanna do, you can do that. And then finally, if we go up to the top right corner, these are your share sheets, right? So you can invite people to your notebook, you can copy link and email it to them or text it to them. You can even send them a PDF copy, right? You can email with Outlook or send from another application. And then if you go to settings here, you know, you can show your pride, which is something that I showed you before. So if you tap on this, then all of like the auxiliary little customizations and the icons turn into this nice little like, rainbow hue, which I really like. And then after that, these are just your overall settings. So like make sure you're syncing correctly with all your attachments, notifications, how you navigate everything, it's all right there. You know, and then you can obviously send feedback, look at the different Microsoft apps, go through a little what's new section. So dark mode, get a head start of your meetings, insert shapes, pictures, background, page sync status, support for Apple Pencil, phrase search, drag and drop. And then one thing that I did wanna see, because somebody did ask me if Scribble works inside of these Microsoft applications, and Scribble doesn't work on the actual canvas, right? So if I, you know, say hello, and then if I try to hold that down, it's not gonna let me copy that, right? But where it does work, which is kind of weird, is if on the top left, there's a little search button, right? So let me actually go back to home. Let me type out a hello, and then go up here to search. I can actually, I think, use my pencil to search. So if I use hello in here, it will register as a hello and point it out. So that is the only part where Scribble works and it's only in the search bar. And I think that's because that's like a native API UI thing, but Microsoft hasn't put it into their actual application. It's just like in their search bar. And that's where you're gonna see Scribble work on third party applications the most. It's gonna be like on their search bars and things like that. But that is Microsoft OneNote in a nutshell, right? Some of the biggest things are the infinite canvas that I really love, the ability to pretty much add anything onto your notes and then also being able to collaborate with them, right? So again, Apple Notes is getting closer and closer to something like this, but again, the infinite canvas is one of my favorite things about Microsoft OneNote. But let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. So as everybody saw, Microsoft OneNote is a very robust note-taking application. If you're inside of that Microsoft or that 
Office 365 Suite, then this is gonna be your note-taking app of choice. Since it's saved in the cloud with all your other Microsoft stuff in your OneDrive, that means you can open it on your iPad, on your iPhone, on your Mac, on your Windows computer, from any you know library computer. As long as you sign into your Microsoft account, you will have access to all the notes that you've been taking. And some of the awesome features are those things like the infinite canvas and all those new tools that were added, being able to go ink to shape and also use your finger for note taking. So basically, I think OneNote is one of those robust applications that where yes, it costs money to be part of Microsoft's suite of applications. I believe it starts at $8 a month for the most basic one, but that includes OneNote, right? And that also includes all the other Microsoft applications like Outlook, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, all the ones that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. So Microsoft OneNote on the iPad Pro is probably one that's the most ready for the iPad Pro because it is supposed to be a like pencil first note-taking device. So yes, I recommend Microsoft OneNote if you guys are looking for a note-taking application for your iPad Pro, for any iPad for that matter, like I keep mentioning. And you don't need to be part of the beta program to take advantage of Microsoft OneNote. Microsoft OneNote, even before this update, aside from all the UI changes make it look a little bit different, a little bit more playful, the actual function is still there on the older versions of Microsoft OneNote and even on iPadOS 14. So by all means, give it a go, try out Microsoft OneNote. I'll leave it down in the description below if you guys wanna check it out. And that's gonna do it for this video. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you guys wanna see a video comparison of Microsoft OneNote with Apple Notes, Notability. There's so many note-taking applications these days that we might have to put them through their paces because also Apple Notes with iPadOS 15 got some awesome updates that I do wanna go over at some point. But like I said, that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, peace.